Mystery in the Air, starring Peter Lorre, presented by Camel Cigarettes. But, Countess, are you sure you want to put all your winnings on a single card? Absolutely sure, my dear Duke. Well, I don't know how it is in Russia, but here in Paris, it is very seldom that anyone wins on three cards in succession. The game of faro is the same in Russia as anywhere else. But I wish to put the whole amount, 400,000 francs, on my next card. As you wish, madame. I will deal. I have one. No. Look, I have won. See, Duke, you were wrong. Yes, I was wrong. I... What happened? What's the matter? Each week at this time... Camel Cigarettes bring you Peter Lorre in the excitement of the great stories of the strange and unusual, of dark and compelling masterpieces culled from the four corners of world literature. Tonight, The Queen of Spades by Alexander Pushkin. Mystery in the Air, starring Peter Lorre, brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. Yes, just leave it to your T-Zone to judge. Your T-Zone, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, is your true proving ground for any cigarette. See if camel's rich, full flavor doesn't get highest rating with your taste. And if camel's cool mildness isn't more than welcome to your throat. See if you don't find, like millions of other smokers, that camels suit your T-zone to a T. The story I'm about to tell you, you may not believe, but I assure you it actually happened. Now, the whole thing started one night when a group of young officers were having a game of cards at the rooms of Narumov of the horse guard. There were five of us there, including a lieutenant in the engineers named Hermann. He was the son of a German who had become a naturalized Russian. And he was an ambitious young man of strong passions and imagination, which he held in check by an even stronger will. Thus, though a born gambler at heart, Hermann never touched a card for he considered his financial position did not allow it. Oh, I remember that night. At about four in the morning, we all sat down to supper. Oh, I'm not hungry. (laughs) How did you make out, Surin? Ah, I lost. You always lose, Surin. You must be very strong-minded to be so consistent. (laughs) If you think he is strong-minded, how about yourself, Herman? Me? Why me? Uh, You've never held a card in your hand or made a bet. And yet you sit here until four o'clock in the morning watching us play. <laughs> well, Tomsky, you see, gambling interests me. It interests me very much. In fact, I, I'm a gambler at heart, but I'm not in a financial position to sacrifice the necessary in a hope for winning the superfluous. In other words, I cannot afford it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't explain anything. We none of us can afford it. <laughs> oh, Herman's easy enough to understand. He's of German de- descent. Therefore, he's thrifty. Right. Now, it's my grandmother... The Countess Fedotovna, who baffles me. You know, she won't gamble either. Oh, lots of grandmothers don't gamble. St. Petersburg is full of them. Ah, <laughs> yes, but they don't know the secret my grandmother knows. Huh? Secret? What kind of secret does she know? Something we'd all of us give a lot to possess. Huh? Yeah, a combination of three cards that can't fail to win at the faro table. Hmm? Oh, there's no such thing. What are you trying to tell us? Oh, let's go home. It's wait, late. wait, Tomsky, I'd like to know more about this secret. <laughs> what do you care, Herman? You don't gamble. Still, I'd like to hear about it. All right. Many years ago, when my grandmother was a lot younger, she went to Paris. Oh, she must have been quite a sensation. The Muscovite Venus, they called her. Anyway, she gambled at Faro with the Duke of Orléans. 
Lost a great deal of money. Much more than she could pay. Yeah, who does Come on, keep quiet, will you? <laughs> well, there was at that time a Count Saint-Germain in Paris. Mm-hmm. A mysterious figure that no one knew much about. Well, be that as it may. He revealed to my grandmother the secret of the three winning cards. Yeah. And did she win? That night she played again with the Duke d'Orléans. Yeah. Played the three cards, one after the other, doubling her bet each time. And all three won, and she recovered everything she had lost ten times over. Oh, oh a little hard on the Duke, don't you think? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, he dropped dead, I believe. It was a long time ago. Oh, come on, come on, Tomsky, go on with the story. Now, that's all there is. My grandmother never touched a card again. You mean she knows how to pick three winning cards in succession, and you haven't succeeded in getting the secret <laughs> out of her? That's the devil of it. She had four sons, one of whom was my father, and yet she would never reveal the secret to any of them. Though it wouldn't have been a bad thing for them. Or for you either. Huh? <laughs> uh, I've had enough. I'm going home. Well, I'll go along with you. All right, come along. Tomsky, uh, tell me, this grandmother of you is uh, Countess Fedotovna. Does she live in St. Petersburg? Yes, with a ward of hers named uh, Lizavieta. For a girl, she is supposed to be my grandmother's companion, but slave would be a better word for it. <laughs> Your grandmother's a widow? Yes. Oh, now, don't get your hopes up, Herman. She's a bit too old for you. She's 86 if she's a day. Still, I, I should like to meet her. No, there's not much chance of it, I'm afraid. She doesn't go about much anymore. But I still should like to meet her. Yes, I... I should like to meet her very much. Lizavieta? Hello, Paul. Don't tell me my grandmother is here. No, but she is going to the embassy ball tomorrow. Tonight, I... I came alone. Oh, oh, oh. while the cat's at home, the mouse will play, hmm? What's this I've been hearing about you? About me? Mm, all very romantic, I understand. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Come, 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 Lizavieta. You can't tell me that you don't know about the mysterious officer who's been standing outside the house for the last two weeks? About the notes he hands you when you get into the carriage with my grandmother? About the letters he sends by the milliner's girl? Who told you? <laughs> Great friend of your officer. A lieutenant in the engineers named Herman. Herman? Oh, yes, I, I think I've heard of him. Is he nice? Oh, I like him very much. But he's a very determined young man. And means to get what he wants. Personally, I wouldn't trust him. He has the profile of Napoleon and the soul of Mephistopheles. <laughs> oh, good evening, Kamsky. Good evening. Speak of the devil. Hello there, Herman. Uh, Lizavieta, may I present Lieutenant Herman? Mademoiselle. The man we were just talking about. Uh, Herman, this is Lizavieta Ivanovna. It's my grandmother's ward. How do you do, Mademoiselle Lizavieta? How do you do, Lieutenant? Would you like to dance? Yes, I would like to. Good. See you later, Tomsky. Oh, this is paradise, Lizavieta. Holding you in my arms, feeling your heart beat against mine. No, you mustn't say things like that. <laughs> People will hear you. They'll talk. I don't care. They're talking already. Why did you make up that story about your imaginary friend to tell Tom? <laughs> Because I didn't want him to know it was I. And, and I had to talk about you to somebody. I hope the Countess doesn't hear about it. Devil with her. It's not the Countess I'm in love with. It's you. Oh, Lizavieta, this... This is so wonderful. It, it makes up for all those nights I stood outside your house and... Look. There in the door. The Countess's coachman come to fetch oh. me. I must go home. When am I going to see you again? I don't know. Oh, but this is horrible. My heart is burning with things I want to tell you, but I can never, never see you alone. There must be some way. There is a way. Yes, how? Take this. Oh. oh. This is the key to the Contessa's house. Oh, Lizaviette. Tomorrow night, we're going to the embassy ball. We'll be home at 2. If you let yourself into the house at about 11.30, all the servants will be asleep. Yes, I will. Go directly to the library. It's at the right end of the corridor at the top of the stairs. 
Wait for me there. Right in of the corridor. Oh, you sweet Lisavieta. I adore you. Where's the Countess' room? At the other end of the corridor. Why do you ask me that? I don't want to get into the wrong room by mistake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but now I must go. Till tomorrow night at 2 o'clock. Au revoir, chérie. Mademoiselle, good night. Good night, my child. Conte, are you sure there's nothing you want me to do for you? No, nothing, thank you, Lisovieta. I think I will just put my jewels away and sit quietly a while by myself. Good night. Good night. Uh, I am so tired. So very tired. I am too old to go. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, madame. Who are you? Please don't be alarmed, Countess. I, I have no intention of harming you, but please. How did you get in my bedroom? I have been waiting behind that curtain, waiting just for a chance to ask you a favor. A favor? Yes. Of yes. me? Yes, a favor of you, madame. You can ensure the happiness of my life. It'll, it'll cost you nothing. I don't know who you are, but you're mad. No, I'm not. I, I happen to know that you can name three winning cards in order. And... Oh, that's it. Uh... That was a joke. No, it was not a joke. Oh, oh I can see it by your expression, madame. I, madame, I want you to tell me those three winning cards I do. No, no. But whom are you keeping that secret for? Huh? Your grandsons, they are rich enough without it. Besides, they, they don't know the value of money, but I, I do. I, your cards will not be thrown away. I'm... No, no. It is a crest. It brings death. I'll chance that. Of, of what use is it to you? Or is it connected with some terrible sin or, or some bargain with the devil, huh? I'm ready to take your sins upon my soul, only please, please reveal the secret to me. No. Please. What? I... You. You won't catch. I'll make you answer. No. I want no. you. You have my happiness in your no. hands. No. I'll take you to... No. You, no. you won't speak. Huh? No. I'll make you... No. you... I'll... She wouldn't tell me. Are you all right? I heard voices. Contest, it is everything. You. Yes, it is I. But I don't understand. Where's the Contest? There she is. Contest, what's the... It's no use. She... She's dead. Dead? Yes, dead. She's taking with her the one thing I wanted in the world. Without which I, I don't want to face life. You killed her? Yes, but... But you're not going to say anything to her. <gasps> no one knows I was in the house except you. You can't tell because you gave me the key. But you killed her? Yes, yes, I killed her. I killed her. She, she deserved to die. But now... Now I'll never know her secret. Never. No one... No one will ever know her secret. Of, <laughs> unless she... Unless she comes back to... to tell it to somebody. <laughs> In a few moments, Mr. Peter Lorre will bring us the climax of tonight's mystery in the air when camels present Act Two of The Queen of Spades. Experience is the best teacher. Remember the wartime cigarette shortage? Who doesn't? One thing about it, though, smokers who went through it really learned a lot about cigarettes. They had firsthand experience with many different brands. How true. Goodness, we certainly smoked whatever brands we could get in those days. I smoke so many different brands, I'm practically a walking encyclopedia about cigarettes. Well, I'm a camel smoker now. And believe me, I know Camel's the cigarette for me because I've compared so many brands. Yes, yeah, smoking whatever brands they could get during the wartime cigarette shortage made people everywhere experts on judging the differences in cigarette quality. That experience convinced a host of smokers 
that they preferred the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of camels. Result? More people are smoking camels than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel yourself. So the Countess is dead, and now the funeral is in progress. What a stupendous funeral. The huge church is banked with flowers, all the way from the doors to the catafalque where the coffin rests. And such a distinguished group of mourners. It almost seems as if all Imperial Russia is there. Sad occasion, eh? Yes. Well, I suppose the old girl had to go sooner or later. Oh, there were times when I doubted she ever would. Uh, what'd she die of? A heart attack, they said. Why? Oh, I've heard rumors. Uh, you know how those things are. Something about bruises on her throat. Oh, no, no. No, nothing to it, no. The doctor said she could have inflicted those herself oh? when she had trouble breathing. Hello, Tomsky. My condolences. Oh, thank you for coming, Herman. That's very nice of you. You never met my grandmother, did you? No, I didn't, but uh, that's no reason I shouldn't show my respect. After all, you're my friend. I beg your pardon, but would you gentlemen care to view the remains before the services commence? I suppose I should, anyway. Oh, yes, by all means. I'll come, too, if, uh, if you don't mind. Not at all. Thank you. Come along. Doesn't she look peaceful? Oh, girl, I was fond of her. Wait. Wait, did you see that? What? See what? Look. One of her eyelids moved. What? I tell you. Come on, be quiet. But I saw it. Her, her eyelids moved as, as if she winked at me. That, as if she... She winked? Oh, he's fainting. Ah, a fine example of an army officer. Fainting at a funeral. No, maybe he's sick. Come on, help me carry him out of here. I shall never get to sleep. My, my conscience won't let me. Oh, why did I do it? Why, why did I go to that cursed funeral just, just because my conscience said you are the murderer of that old woman? I, I wanted to implore her pardon, but, but she winked at me. I, I could swear it. She did. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, you do not recognize me. Uh, you have a short memory. Come to see. I have uh, come back. Beyond against my wishes. Huh? I have been ordered to grant your request. Grant my request? I... Yes. Three, seven, and ace will win for you if played in succession. Three, seven, and an ace. But only on these conditions. Condi anything, anything that at all. You do not play more than one card in 24 hours. And that you never play cards again. I promise, I promise. Three, seven, and an ace. <laughs> Three, seven, and an ace. Oh, I must remember it. Three, seven, ace. Three, seven, ace. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. Yes, I'm all right. That's good. We were worried about you. We hadn't seen you since you collapsed at my grandmother's funeral. Oh, oh, oh. that was terrible, Lieutenant. And an officer shouldn't faint. I, I hope you'll forgive me for what happened yesterday. Oh, that's all right. Could have happened to anyone. Hmm. But it wasn't yesterday, you know. Hmm? It was the day before. The day before? No, I don't remember that. <laughs> you must have been pretty sick to lose a whole day like that. What got into you? Tomsky, uh... Will you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. If I can, what is it? 
I've heard a lot about a certain Chikolinsky and, and a gambling that goes on at his house every oh, night. Oh, yes. And... Chikolinsky has practically spent his whole life at the card table. That's what I heard. Oh, he's amassed millions at it, but what... I should like to go there. Oh, you want to watch them play Faro at Chekolinsky? No, I want to play. You want to play? Yes. <laughs> What's happened to you, Herman? I thought you couldn't afford to gamble. Yes, but now I can. I, you see, I, I have a little legacy left uh, from my father. And Congratulations. I feel I'm in luck. Uh, when can you take me? Any time. Tonight? Yes, yes, if you feel up to it. Good, that's very good. <laughs> we'll go to Chekolinsky's tonight, huh? <laughs> Tomsky, honestly, I, oh, I've never seen such a magnificent establishment. Never, never in my life have I seen such a place. It's... Well, it's all paid for by fellows like you who felt they were in luck. <laughs> Look, there's Chukalinsky at the faro table. Where? Oh. Come on over, I'll introduce you. But don't say I didn't warn you. Good evening. Good evening, Tomsky. Um, Chukalinsky, mm -hmm. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Lieutenant Herman. Uh, Herman, this is the famous Chukalinsky. Good evening. Oh, sure. Uh, Herman seems to feel particularly fortunate tonight. Do you suppose he could sit in and take a card? A friend of yours? <laughs> but of course. Good luck, Herman. Thanks. Will you be kind enough to select your card, please? Thank you. This is my card. And how much would you like to bet, Lieutenant? I would like to bet 47,000 rubles. <laughs> Forgive me, Lieutenant, but we only play for cash. It's quite all right. I, I have it. Money's right here. Are you crazy, Herman? You're playing pretty high, Lieutenant. Nobody here has ever staked anything like that on one card before. Well, do you accept it or don't you? I accept it. Then if you'll be kind enough to deal. As you wish. Nine. Three. Herman has one. One. Look, his card is a three. Well, congratulations, Lieutenant. Uh, do you want me to settle with you now? If you please. Uh, here you are. 47,000 rubles. No! Would you like to try again? No. Not tonight, but tomorrow night I'll be back to try another card. Well, Lieutenant, what do you want to wager tonight? Same stake as last night... Plus my winnings, 94,000 rubles. Just as you say. You have picked your card. I will deal. Knave, seven. Look, look, Herman's won again. The card is oh, yeah. There you are. 94,000 rubles. Thank you, sir. I shall see you again tomorrow night. I don't believe he'll show up. He'd be a fool to Here he comes now, with Thompson. Now, he can't win three times in a row. He doesn't pass. Gentlemen, gentlemen, quiet, please. Well, Lieutenant Herman, how much do you wish to bet tonight? Same stake, plus my winnings. Here it is. 180,000 rubles. What? On one card? Yes. Herman, don't you think that... Please be quiet, Thomas. I know what I'm doing. Gentlemen, please. Will you choose your card, Lieutenant? I have it. Will you please deal? Queen. Ace. <laughs> I win again. Ace wins. Here it is. Huh? If you'd been holding an ace, you would have won. But you haven't an ace. You have a queen, and it loses. What do you mean? What is... <laughs> you weren't holding an ace, my dear fellow. You have the queen of spades. Queen? Look. Look queen at yourself. Queen of spades? What? It is impossible. I have... Uh... Yes, it is. Yes, it is the queen of spades. Huh? <laughs> now I see it, but... Look at... Oh, it isn't the queen of spades. It's the countess. Look! See the resemblance? <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, she's tricked me! She's deliberate! She tricked me! What are you talking about? Your grandmother! Your grandmother, the countess! 
She told me three, seven, and eight. She told you? Yes, she But did. you never met her. I did meet her. I waited for her one night in her bedroom, and I pleaded with her. But she refused to tell me. She refused to tell me her secret. And then I took her by the throat. And you and I... killed her? Huh? You took her by the throat and yes, strangled her? I killed her, yes, but she didn't tell me that. But then one night she came back. She came back from the grave and she told me three cards. It was seven. I don't know anything about it, but she lied. She lied to me. Oh, that dirty woman. She's got no revenge. I, I've lost all the money I had in the world, but I, I don't care anymore. But I, Quiet, I'll you. show her. Quiet. I'll, 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 you murdered the cops. You're hanged for that. Let them hang me. Let them hang me. I'll get even with her. Beyond the grave, I'll get even with her. Why, he's got mad. I'll be glad when they hang me. I'll be glad when they hang me. But they didn't hang him. He is spending the rest of his life in room 17 of the Obukhov Hospital. He never answers any question, but constantly Three, mutters the same seven, thing. Eight. Three, seven, eight. and three camels to serve men's hospital from coast to coast. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, American Lake, Washington, U.S. Army and Navy General Hospital, Hot Springs, Arkansas, U.S. Naval Hospital, Brooklyn, New York, U.S. Marine Hospital, Detroit, Michigan, and Veterans Hospital, Perry Point, Maryland. There are many doctors among America's millions of camel smokers. In fact, according to a nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. This survey was made by three leading independent research organizations who questioned 113,597 doctors living in every state of the Union. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Next week, Mystery in the Air... Starring Mr. Peter Lorre, brings you one of the greatest American classics of all time, The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe, with a special musical score composed and conducted by Paul Barron. Mr. Pipe Smoker, do you get the greatest possible enjoyment from your pipe? Do you pack it full of mellow, mild Prince Albert? Prince Albert, you know, is a rich, full-flavored tobacco, specially made for smoking pleasure. Specially treated to ensure against tongue bite, crimp cut to burn slow, smoke cool. No wonder more pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco. See if Prince Albert doesn't give you a better smoke. Be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night for a rollicking half hour of folk tunes and humor with your favorite stars, Red Foley, Minnie Pearl, Rod Brassfield, and the rest of the Opry gang. And as Red's special guest, Judy Martin. Yes, folks, Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry, Saturday night over NBC. Listen again next week at this same time when the makers of Camel Cigarettes present Mr. Peter Laurie in Mystery in the Air. The artists supporting Mr. Laurie tonight were Henry Morgan, Loreen Tuttle, Peggy Weber, Ben Wright, Louis Van Ruten, Stanley Waxman, Jack Edwards Jr., and Rolf Sedan. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.